باذن الله we continue the كتاب الجنائز كتاب الجنائز and we are at the last part of the first chapter from the كتاب the part that we were studying last time قال والسقط إذا بلغ أربعة أشهر غسل وصلي عليه ومن تعذر غسله يمم يمم أو ومن تعذر غسله يمم ومن تعذر غسله يمم. We have said a سقط a سقط is you know caused by the miscarriage and any fetus or a baby in the womb of the mother that it get to four month as we said. قال وهذا هو إن الجنين يكون في بطنه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك in the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Describing the stage of the creation of the uh, fetus into the 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 womb uh, of the mother. So he said, "قال يمكث في بطن أمي stay like being created and developed for forty year, uh, for forty days as نطفة uh, sperm. قال ثم يكون علقة kind of uh, you know that's the process or the stages of the development. علقة after that." Forty days. قال ثم يكون مضغة when it becomes like a piece of flesh for forty days. فهذه أربعة أشهر. So this is like four months. And after four months, قال ثم يرسل يرسل الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات. هذا الحديث أبو بكر صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the angel will be sent. And the soul will be blown into the fetus becomes a new creation, the creation as as a human being. Therefore, if the miscarriage happened after the four month, the asqtu that uh, whatever you know it's uh, falling or comes out from that, uh, the baby for that uh, you know for this period of time will be as we said wasil uh, as he's saying here. قال إذا بلغ أربع غسل وصلي عليه. Will be washed the way we describe it, and the prayer of جنازة will be observed on the on the baby that was you know delivered dead at least after four months. قال and then it's recommended to give for this for the 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 baby who was born dead a name etc. Then قال ومن تعذر غسله ومن تعذر غسله يمم and whoever so this is coming to a general ruling whoever which will not be able to be washed for any condition and we mention example like the example some someone's skin cannot be touched by the water like someone was. He died. Afanana wa afakum Allah by being burned or things like that. So, for any condition that someone cannot be washed, then it will be given to him the tayammum. Tayammum, as you know, the the ruling of the tayammum to wipe the face and the hands after hitting on the ground and to get dust or the way of the tayammum. قال ويكون التعذر إما بعدم الماء أو بتعذر استعماله في هذا الميت. so the تعذر someone will not be able to wash because it might not be. I mean we mentioned last time that the water might not be existing when the person died. so maybe they be in trouble and they don't have water to wash him, or that the body will not be able to to have water on it like the skin as we example. yeah. Some of the scholars say, "قال لا يمم إذا تعذر غسله لأن هذه ليس طهارة حدث." Some of them say, "This is, this is we're not talking about cleanliness or like طهارة حدث. Is like someone need to have that required طهارة to pray. So the the use of the water is for the غسل or for the wudu, for the sake for someone to ليستبيح الصلاة so he can pray." Uh, then if he doesn't find water or like he cannot touch the water, then he he'll move uh, toward the uh, toward the tayammum. And saying here the ghusl for al mayit is mainly for for cleanliness, so it's not like a tahara uh, ta'abudiyya. 
That's why some of the scholars, they say, they said, uh, you know, some, uh, the tayammum, if there is no water, therefore, the tayammum will not be uh, necessary or obligatory. قال, uh, but, uh, you know, well, uh, well, asah, I mean, if someone is like washing him and he cannot wash him, then doing the tayammum, that is really the, the, the true opinion that we are studying here. But uh, just mention another opinion of uh, uh, that exists from some scholar who have stipulated uh, such opinion. قال وعلى وعلى الغاسل and then وعلى الغاسل ستر ما رآه إن لم يكن حسنا. Now here uh, kind of condition or etiquette related to the one who washing the body that this person need to have like integrity and uh, kind of level of righteousness and uh, confidentiality. I mean, let's say the righteousness here uh, is used to, to cover and to be, to hide whatever he saw, uh, you know, when he washing the body. And that's, subhanAllah, from keeping that privacy, that's because he's a trust. That's why one of the condition of the one who washing, he'd be someone trustworthy, a person with integrity. قال وعلى الغاسل ستر ما رآه إن لم يكن حسنا so he need to keep secret whatever he saw if it wasn't good if it wasn't good here in another uh, uh, you know um, a book uh, uh, you know في زاد المستقنع uh, other uh, explanation of the book they uh, give some of uh, more uh, elements that we'll share together إن شاء الله تعالى قال Example, what it means that someone he saw uh, uh, things that he should not be shared and it will be forbidden to share actually as he said here. But what if you see something good? What if you see something good? You see that uh, this face is glowing, someone is smiling when he's washing him. قال وقد يكون وجهه مصفرا حتى إن بعضهم يرى بعد موته متبسما فهذا لا يستره. Someone will see someone like Subhanallah, his face is smiling after his death. This is someone, things should not be keep as sec secret. So things are, this is our Mubashirat, kind of signs of glad tidings for the one who deceased. And someone will make more dua for the deceased person. And he wish asking Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him such a favor at his death. قال أما المسيء من الناحية السيء من الناحية الجسدية فإن الميت قد يكون في جلده أشياء من التي تسوءه إذا طلع الناس عليه. There's things maybe now from the body perspective, some people they might have things in their body that they don't know anybody to know about when they are alive. Therefore, when someone is washing them, he keep need to keep that secret. You should not say, oh, when I was uh, that person, he has, for example, something in his body or or describing. That's that is forbidden. So that is forbidden. Uh, قال, uh, وقال العلماء uh, إلا إذا كان صاحب بدعة وداعي إلى بدعته ورآه على وجه مكروه فإنه ينبغي أن يبين ذلك حتى يحذر الناس من دعوته إلى البدع. Now it might be someone who's been calling for a deviated way, someone known by you know uh, his crookedness by his uh, erratic and uh, astray thoughts uh, in the way of the faith and uh, the way of the deen. And uh, it might be seen at the time of the washing, you know, with the dark face or signs of wal-iyadu uh, billah, of wrath um, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're saying in this condition, in this condition, uh, it might be uh, recommended to share such a thing for people who have been following him, you know, following his astray uh, path to be uh, warned, for people to be uh, aware, and also for other people to be, subhanAllah, reprimanded and have a fear uh, to, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not fall into, uh, billah, in the deviation, because deviation and crookedness has its an impact and effect and one of these uh, negative effects, uh, is in the time of death. It's really uh, seen and observed in the time of death. 
فقال فإنه ينبغي أن يبين ذلك حتى يحذر الناس من دعوته إلى البدعة uh, and subhanallah the it is known that uh, everyone and depends on his uh, journey of action in this life hmm? everyone's journey of action in his life if someone uh, a pious writers fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore the way he ends you know, it will be a way of honoring, being seen in his face, seen in the people who gather as his janazah, uh, seen in this, uh, you know, how many people they make dua for him. So all the condition of, uh, of increasing in this person, in this deceased person, reward and honor will be like the right favorable condition. Mm. But if someone was astray and calling people to the way of the crookedness, then the end will have signs to, to reflect that deviation. Uh, for example, uh, refusing to say la ilaha illallah at the end, uh, you know, darkness in the face. So uh, there's, there's signs, there's signs. قال وذكر في الروض and there's another شرح he said قال فيلزمه so there's other uh, let's say um, more uh, uh, statement other than being mentioned in the Z but it's like uh, more comment that I want to share with you and it's not because this is where it ends the paragraph or the chapter قال وعلى الغاصل ستر ما رآه إن لم يكن حسنا uh, so the ads that I will share with you, قال فيلزمه uh, uh, ستر الشر أو ستر الشر. He has the washer to uh, hide anything that was ill, uh, uh, bad. لا إظهار الخير. But he should not hold secret the good thing that he had. So. قال ستر الشر واجب وإظهار الخير ليس بواجب. So if to see something negative is an obligation to not share it, to keep it secret. If you see something good, it's not an obligation to say it. If someone doesn't want to say it, I mean, it depends on the person. So it's not an obligation. If, it's not necessarily like an obligation. If you see something good, you said, I have to share it. No. So it depends. So someone is not obligated to share the good, bad. It's an obligation to keep secret the uh, bad thing that someone uh, saw when he's washing. قَالَ وَنَرْجُوا لِلْمُحْسِنِ وَنَخَافُ عَلَى الْمُسِيءِ Now when someone passed away, قَالَ نَرْجُوا لِلْمُحْسِنِ So this person known by his uh, good action, by his integrity and righteousness. In, uh, and we say righteousness, it doesn't mean like Someone is uh, in the highest level of rightness. I mean, people of integrity, people are known. The, you see them in the masjid, uh, they talk nice. They, uh, you see them when you ask them for help, uh, they help. So those with the people with good moral, good conduct, you know, uh, at least when we're saying when, when they meet each other in the community, in the gathering, in the congregation, but whatever is secret or when they are alone, that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ وَنَرْجُوا لِلْمُحْسِنِ وَنَرْجُوا And we hope good for the one good doers that know one by their good action. نَرْجُوا لَهُمْ is me like we make dua for them. وَنَخَافُ عَلَى الْمُسِيءِ And then we'll be concerned and frightened in a way about those who really they were, uh, you know, known by their bad action in the, uh, during their life. قَالَ mm. And this is which make everyone, when if someone was uh, doing, you know, not good during his life, that the khawf is like the concern that the believer has on his brother or sister who passed away, but they weren't doing, known to not doing good. Someone need to be uh, hastened to, to do dua for them. قَالَ وَخَوْفُنَا عَلَى الْمُسِيءِ يَسْتَلْزِمُ أَنْ نَدْعُ اللَّهَ لَهُ يَسْتَلْزِمُ It requires that we 
pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as his action uh, didn't void his faith. As long, because if he void his faith, therefore it's not be uh, permissible to make dua. قال وَلَا نَشْهَدُ إِلَّا لِمَنْ شَهِدَ لَهُ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم لا نشهد is like we don't praise someone and grant him Jannah only for those who the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that they have or he gave them the glad tidings of paradise واضح so we cannot say someone no one a great scholar known by his righteousness, by his integrity, he passed away, he said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is from the people of paradise. That that's, uh, is forbidden to say. So we only have the right to say, to grant or confer in paradise only for those who for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them the glad tidings of the paradise. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't speak uh, out of his whims. Whatever he says, وسلم, is a revelation from Allah. So if he gave the glad tidings for those companions, you know, uh, that we know uh, with paradise, like Abi Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, uh, wa Talha, wa Zubayr, wa Sa'id ibn Zayd, or wa Zubayr ibn Awam, etc., those the Prophet وسلم, gave them. So it's wahi. So no one else can stay such a thing or uh, stipulate such a thing is haram no? because we don't have the knowledge well that's the thing in islam you don't we cannot speak you know uh, without evidence say so and so he's a great person he was a great person he died and now he's in jannah I said, what is your evidence to say that he's in Jannah? It doesn't mean like we deny that for him in Jannah. That's, we pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant him paradise. But we cannot say he's in Jannah. Because only Allah knows and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his messenger, when he said it, he had the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if we look at the way of the aqidah, qala, uh, there is first... شهادة للجنس. For example, you say the person who passed away is a believer. You say may Allah grant him paradise, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant paradise to every believer. So we cannot say, Oh Allah, grant paradise to so and so. Oh Allah, I mean, we say paradise is for the one who deceased, who just died. Okay. May Allah grant him paradise. And paradise is for every believer who died in a state of unbelief. So that's what we can, we cannot make it ala ta'yeen. We cannot make, let's say, paradise is for so and so. Because that's, we don't have the right to say such a thing because we don't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that the believer, Allah grant them paradise. So we confirm that and we believe in that. So when we say about the jinns, the jinns which is the kind of the believer, every believer is entering paradise. For so and so, may Allah grant the paradise. He died, inshallah, Allah is a believer because we don't know what is in the heart, we don't know uh, many things, we don't know the unseen. قال النوع الثاني شهادة للعين شهادة العين this is what is forbidden to witness paradise to witness for so and so that he is in paradise that's that قال فلا نشهد بذلك فلا نشهد بذلك and this is also in the uh, with other faith they have the certainty uh, that whoever who for example accepted certain element in the faith he is in paradise He's saved and he's in paradise. And then they are kind of, um, you know, questioning and putting in question the Islamic faith when they say, you know, uh, you believe in something that you're not certain that you're going to paradise. So it's like uh, making the, uh, the fragility or let's say... Um, 
if there's defect in the Islamic faith, is like because you Muslim, you're not certain that you uh, go into paradise. Which is actually, when you reflect on it, the one who's more uh, secure, if you can say, when he speaks, he's the closest to the truth than someone he's certain. Right? If you're traveling, we say, certainly I'm going to get to this town at 9 p.m. So the one who's, you know, uh, traveling with him, he said, Inshallah, we don't know. If Allah will, we're planning to get at 9 p.m., but we cannot be certain to get there at 9 p.m. What if we have an accident? What if the car, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have a breakdown? What if there's a storm? What, 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 what if? Right? So to be certain and to have the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not be certain, so the one who, who have the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his planning, that the one who the closest to the truth and the closest to the sidq. But based on that, uh, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we recited in Surah Al-Fatiha, is the king of the Day of Judgment. Right? And he's the only judge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maliki wa maliki yawm And the owner of the Day of Judgment. So how can we, and this is our answer, how can we confirm for people to be in paradise when the day of judgment is not yet here. On the other hand, when you look at it, when you say, so-and-so is in paradise, is that like taking the place of a rububiyah, you're taking the place of the king of the day of judgment and you like forcing him. So it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn to you and say, how can you confirm that this person in paradise when Allah is the only one who grants this guidance? No one can enter paradise. Only when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, guide him to paradise, take him to paradise, enter paradise. So how can someone will confirm to be in paradise in this life before even his death, and the day of judgment is not here, when here he only can be guided to the faith by the will of Allah, so how can he guide himself to paradise ignoring the will of Allah and ignoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decision because he had the ultimate decision subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why based on that, so when we don't witness for someone paradise, it doesn't mean like we have a doubt about the person. Nothing have to do with the person. It have to do between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you say, confirm something? It's like you have, for example, someone give you the task to do a deal on his behalf. And he's telling you, this is you know, the, the, let's say my, my requirement. If, for example, for 20%, you can do the deal. That's what he said. And you find a very good deal, but there is no, for example, buyer. You find someone who told you, okay, I will buy it from you with 40%. Off. It will not be right to make the deal without going back to the to the one who assigned for you this task, right? Because if someone will do it, you say you are on your own. I want my merchandise back, for example. This is kind of qiyas by analogy and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest of the example. It's like, I say, this one is in paradise. It's like you make the deal, you grant him paradise. Do you own paradise? Do you own your life? Do you own any judgment? So it's between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we say the statement, nothing have to do with the one who passed away. That's why here, قَالَ شَهَادَةُ الْعَيْنِ أَنْ تَشْهَدَ لِشَخْصٍ بِعَيْنِهِ فَإِنَّهُ مُحَرَّمٌ مَمْنُوعٌ is forbidden. Not because we doubt, as we said, the integrity or rightness 
of the person who passed away that he's known by his righteousness, he's known by his, you know, helping and racing for the good. Nothing had to do with that person, the servant who passed away. It's between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is belong to Allah, doesn't belong to us. He's the one who decides. The Prophet sallam said that. Said no one will enter paradise except if he's embraced by the mercy of Allah. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Even you, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ Even me. Why? Because the rahm of Allah belongs to Allah. And Allah shower with his blessing and mercy whom he will. But when you come to say this one is in paradise, uh, is like you, you, you violate Allah's right in whom to grant the, his rahmah. And this is just to, uh, in the end of this part of the uh, chapter of al Janaz. But in the same time, for us, as a way of the Aqidah, as living in the society, uh, to know how to, to answer this type of question. Qala, العشر المبشرين بالجنة أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وستة مجموعون في بيت سعيد وسعد وابن عوف وطلحة وعامر فهر والزبير والزبير أنظر حديث وألحق بها We say, What it mean, We cannot, uh, you know, praise someone uh, is, uh, above what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say. So we don't know. So then we just our evaluation and praising for the sake of the dua, but we cannot confirm, which is mean, we cannot make it a certainty. It's like to obligate Allah to take what we said. Because Allah knows what we do not know. So we keep preserve the right to Allah. That when we confirm it and will be certain, it's like we're violating a right that belongs to Allah. This is attribute of a divine. Yeah, but when we know the person, it doesn't mean that's what I said. Nothing has to do with the person. We're not doubting the person. But this is Allah's right. We cannot confirm. I mean, we cannot confirm that you're going to live for the next second. And we cannot confirm that you're going to die a believer. Subhanallah. Uh, there, is, there is things sometimes comes to the heart that what was so, you know, dear, in the next second, he doesn't even want to look at it. Uh, we, we can say in, in a way, you know, mashallah, uh, this person, uh, you know, in, but we cannot confirm it in a way like of al jazm But when we talk about it, we have the right to say it based on what we know. And then said, وَنَكِلُوا السَّرَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا نُزَكِّ So when we say, وَلَا نُزَكِّ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدًا This is our good thinking about these people. So when uh, Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عن, uh, he was complimented, uh, someone he's praising him, you know. He said a beautiful statement would help us to get the balance. Uh, what he said, قَالَ uh, اللَّهُمَّ لَا تُؤَخِرْنِي بِمَا يَقُولُونَ وَاغْفِرْ لِي مَا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ that's the humbleness and the humility. Oh Allah, do not call me accountable for what they said. They say, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you call me accountable to the level how someone being praised, that person is going to be in problem. So because when someone has weakness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call him accountable based on his weakness. If someone, for example, uh, cannot carry uh, a load of uh, 50 pounds, you know, 
You cannot, you know, blame him why he didn't do this because he cannot do it. Right, but if you know that he can do it, say why he didn't do it because you have been had the task. So that's the level. So if someone has a level of taqwa that he should have done certain thing and he's not doing it, so he's gonna be blamed. But if his weakness uh, will not be able to do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the merciful will be regarding his weakness. So that's why Abu Bakr let uh, don't call me accountable or hold me with what they said. Then the next part, قال, and forgive me, Ya Allah, those, the thing that he, they do not know. Because people, they meet each other, everyone, he presenting his beautiful image. There's image that, uh, you know, all of us, that we don't know from each other. Maybe there's a way how we behave, only closed people, they know it then go closer, closer people they know. And they think that only Allah knows. And then the last one, oh Allah, make me better than what they think of me. So this is not to boast or be right, but yeah, Allah, help me to be in that level that they assumed or they thought, thought that I am at that level. Uh, that's, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, the way how to do it. I mean, nothing has to do with the person, but it is a right for Allah. But this is good, actually, to say, you know, to praise a person, especially, I mean, uh, the sunnah or the way and the right etiquette to not say it in the face of the person. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, the scholars uh, relating here the saying of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. Say, who can be saying that he's truly uh, in the mercy of Allah? Because those who the Prophet ﷺ witnessed for them paradise. But there is those, because hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that you're going to mention, قال, uh, the hadith, قال, uh, لما مرت جنازة, وأثنوا عليها خيرا. There's a funeral passing, and the people who are witnessing this passing of this uh, funeral, they've been talking good about this person who passed away. Say, Masha'Allah, he was this, he was this, he was this, he was doing this, he was good. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وجبت. You see, this is after he died. قال وجبت. وجبت, it means your witness is being accepted and it becomes like uh, granted to be witnessing for his favor. And then, قَالَ وَجَبَتْ They witness and the Jannah for him is, is granted. وَجَبَتْ What you have said and because of what you have said, Allah granted him paradise. وَمَرَّ جَنَازَةٌ أُخْرَى فَأَثْنَوْ عَلَيْهَا شَرًّا Another janazah has been passed, so people, they talk ill about this person. فَقَالَ وَجَبَتْ The Prophet ﷺ He's been accepted what you said as witness for Allah in this earth. So he been وَالْعِيَذُ بِلَا Granted the hellfire وَالْعِيَذُ بِلَا Then ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءُ اللَّهِ فِي أَرْضَهِ You are the witness of Allah in his earth. And that's why uh, there is another hadith, uh, which is like someone who has been witness for him. If they attend his janazah, 40 person, and witness for him, good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make this witness that they had for the person who passed away, shafa'ala, an intercession for him. Uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala qala man attathaqat al-ummah aw jullu al-ummah ala al-thana'i alayh. Let's also join to those who the Prophet sallallahu gave them the glad tidings of paradise. Those that the whole ummah, the whole follower, the whole ummah of Islam, they agreed that these people are, you know, people of nobility, people of righteousness, people of piety, 
they are great imams, great scholars, known throughout generation to be like, uh, you know, praised. Those, he joined them with them. So he said, uh, the example, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, of the four uh, imma, the four known imams, mujtahideen. We're talking here about, you know, al imam uh, Abu Hanifa, wal imam Ahmad, wal imam Malik, wal imam Shafi'i. So the whole ummah, you know, uh, witness for them, for their, you know, righteousness, for their piety, for their knowledge, for their. And MashaAllah, till now we talk about them and we study their books, we study their school of thought. So those, I mean, as the whole Ummah witnessing for them. So the hadith that I mentioned, the whole Ummah witness for them for good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, here the Prophet is وَجَبَتْ is for them in Jannah. وَكَذَلِكَ يَقُولْ وَيُحْرَمُ سُوءُ الظَّنِّ بِمُسْلِمٍ ظَاهِرُهُ الْعَدَالَةِ And it is haram to think ill of a Muslim that he's known by his integrity. I mean, ظَاهِرُهُ, his appearance is good. So if someone, you see someone comes to the masjid, a nice person, have good conduct, you know, uh, humble, modest. Uh, this person, if he passed away, someone should not say, I don't think he was good because that ill or presumed bad about this person is haram. Is haram. And it is in all cases, you know, recommended to think positive of any Muslim who passed away. And if even people, they mention something that it might be good or bad, just make it to be to think of this person good. Thank you. Any question? The next chapter from the Book of al is, is how to make the takfin. Takfin is to prepare the body to, uh, you know, uh, cover him with the kafan. The kafan is the shroud or the, the cloth that uh, will be covered to be prepared for the burial. قال يجب كفنه في ماله مقدما على دين وغيره يجب كفنه في ماله مقدما على دين وغيره The first uh, issue here we have uh, from who's going to pay for the kafan this person he passed away who's going to take care of the cost of the kafan so this is what he said, al uh, 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 Because someone who passed away, he, he might have been, you know, credit, loans, things. So the question is, should those uh, creditors be paid, pay his debt, and then take care of his kafan? So here the hukum is the wujub of taking from his uh, estate the cost of the kafan before looking at anything else. It's like food. Someone is in necessity to eat and he has a loan. Will you tell him to pay the loan or to just provide for himself? So because if he pays the loan, he might die because he doesn't have nothing to eat. So whatever necessity that someone has to provide for himself that comes before any debt. The kafan, the kafan here will take also the obligation as anything necessity. So his necessity is very personal for this person. So from his estate, whatever he has, it will be taken, you know, from that. Even uh, the example, you say, for example, at the time someone passed away and he left a goat. He only have a goat. And he has a loan. He has to pay. They said they have to sell the goat 
and the money to use it for the kafan, and nothing go to any of the creditor. Because that's a necessity. That's one of the rights to, to dignify this person who passed away, to give him the proper burial and to be buried. That's why قال واجبا. Now, يجب تكفينه. So we have الوجوب uh, هنا does the first question before from where to pay it for. Uh, the first question is, is it obligatory to, to have the kafan? It is an obligation, as long if it's possible. I mean, uh, when, when it is available. فقال وحكم تكفين الميت الوجوب وحكم تكفين الميت الوجوب So the ruling for the takfin is the obligation. وذلك لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الذي وقصته راحلته كفنوه في ثوبيه The one that he's been died when he's in traveling to Hajj the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كفنوه في ثوبيه Give him or like uh, cover him in his kafan, in his own clothes that he was wearing. And he was wearing the clothes of ihram. The second evidence that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave his izar to the women. They were, uh, they were washing his daughter when she died, radiallahu ta'ala. Qala, أعطى النساء التي غسلن ابنته حقوة. الحقو he gave them the his izar. وقال أشعرنها إياه. and he said cover her body with it and then put the rest of the of the sheet uh, on top of that. يجب تكفينه والوجوب هنا so it is an obligation to give the kafan for the dead person now for the people who are going to do the kafan is an obligation collective obligation so it's an obligation on the community not individual obligation so the community they need to be sure that the person who died need to have his kafan done okay so it's, a, it's an obligation to make the kafan to, for the takfin, when you say takfin, is to cover the dead uh, body with the clothes, with the shroud, the kafan, uh, you know, big uh, sheet to cover him with. So that's an obligation. Now, for the, what is the ruling for those who want to do for him? That's the whole community. It's an obligation on the whole community. So it's a collective obligation. So the community, they need to be sure that at least there's one person who's going to take care of this task. And if we know none of the community will do this task, therefore the whole community is, um, is sinful. When you say the community, the group, the Muslim, you know, sharing the same thing. قوله في ماله and the cost, as we said, is going to be taken from, from, his, from his own wealth, from his own wealth, from his tariqah, what he have left. And the Prophet sallallahu fi thawbay. Give him, make the kafan for him in his own clothes. So he has to own his kafan. He has to own his kafan. But in some country, Muslim society, uh, you know, there's, you know, kind of, not organizations, it's part of the government, they take care of that. But actually, the priority is that someone, he needs to own his kafan, to pay for his kafan, and if not, if such a thing is done, also will be good. قال, and then he said, مُقَدَّمًا عَلَى دَيْنٍ وَغَيْرِهِ مُقَدَّمًا عَلَى دَيْنٍ وَغَيْرِهِ So it needs to be uh, the priority of paying the kafan before anything else. What they know, and they know is the debt. And the they know is not only limited to a loan, but a day it includes uh, paying rent uh, of a house, paying rent of, uh, of a business, uh, even uh, sadaq, the sadaq, the dowry, there's people who have the sadaq to be delayed, uh, and in case of death, so the sadaq becomes 
an imminent debt to be paid for the uh, for the spouse. So this is the kevan will be paid before that. Uh, before that. قال وغيره then قال في ماله مقدما على دين وغيره وغيره comes the will comes the inheritors who are going to have their part of the inheritance of the estate, those that will be after the paying for the kafan. Then, قال, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ مَالٌ فَعَلَى مَنْ تَلْزَمُهُ نَثَقَتُهُ So, what if he didn't have money? He didn't have anything. Who need to take care of the kafan? قال, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ مَالٌ In case he doesn't have money. فعلى من تلزمه فعلى من قال هنا فعلى من تلزمه نفقته نفقته هو uh, the people in the family who when he was alive when he was alive he was you know those people they were under his charge to provide for them or if he doesn't have money, who's among his family, he's taken of his own provision to provide for him. Okay. In the same family. So here, قال أي الميت حال حياته. So the, the dead person, in, in when he's alive, who's the one who's providing for him? Something happened. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's just like, uh, yeah. قال الميت حال حياتي. When he was alive, who the one who was providing for him, or if he was like the father or the grandfather, who those who were under his his charge that he was providing for them. So these here we're talking about al usul wal furu. It's either the father or the grandparents or the children. Or the children and go. So, قال فتجب نفقة الوالدين والأولاد بكل حال سواء كان وارثين أم لا. So here, uh, anyone from the uh, parents or anyone from the children, they must, if he doesn't have money, the one who passed away, to take care of this. To take care of this. Why? Because in his life, he either was providing for them, and if he didn't have money, they were providing for him. He was a parent, and he has the children providing for them. Then when he gets old, you know, his children are providing for him. So in any case, the parents or the grandparents, the children or the grandchildren, they have to provide for the kafan. There. And he said, Because he might be among the inheritors, for example, the grandson, the grandson, he cannot, maybe he might not inherit anything. Why? Because his father is alive. If his grandparents, you know, his grandfather died, and his father is not there, by obligation he has to pay for the kafan. By obligation he has to pay for the kafan. The same for, you know, the granddaughter, if her mother or her father is not there, and her grandmother or grandfather passed away, by obligation she has to pay the kafan, even though she is not among the inheritors uh, in this case. Yeah. Uh, the question is, what about the fa the brother? What about the brother? The brother, he will take the kafan of his own brother who passed away if the children, they do not exist. If, because in non-existence of ch children, then he's going to be part of the inheritors. If he is part of the inheritor, then it becomes an obligation for him to, to pay for the kafan. If not, his own children or his own parents that they need to take of the kafan. So here we're talking about obligation. So these people, they will not have the choice. Even they don't have money, they have to find out or take a loan to take care of the kafan of their, uh, you know, close one, of their close one. Uh, this is when it comes to the obligation. Then uh, the musannaf goes in things where they are optional. Optional when say there's no an obligation. So here the obligation, so we define it by the way of the whom to provide from who is providing for who, and we limit it by al-usul wal-furu. So the parents and go up, 
and the children and going down. So when I say up, parents and grandparents, children and grandchildren. قال فإن لم يكن له مال فعلاما تلزمه نفقته إلا الزوجة لا يلزمه كفن امرأته إلا الزوجة لا يلزمه كفن امرأته Now he لا تلزمه doesn't mean he should not do it The male spouse, the husband, he's not in obligation to provide for the kafan of his wife إلا الزوج لا يلزمه كفن وامرأته. Now we have to understand here the, the saying of the author. It doesn't mean like he should not do it, but he's not obligated. He's obligated to provide for his children, or for his uh, grandparents, or for his parents. So when you come to the side, there's no obligation. But the other scholar. قال وعلل بأن الإنفاق على الزوجة إنفاق معاوضة مقابل الاستمتاع so it's like at the death that partnership says therefore he doesn't have the obligation as he had in his life for to provide for her that's the meaning but doesn't mean that he should not actually the other opinion قال يلزمه أن يكفين مرأته so here to look at from another perspective another angle so the first angle is like He's not obligated because the partnership ended at the death. The other opinion they said, قَالَ يَلْزَمُهُ أَنْ يُكَفِّنَ إِمْرَاتَهِ is an obligation to take care of the kafan. And the reason here, or the illa that they mention, this is because of the ishra, the life that they live together, you know. And when we're talking about the ma'roof, the life of the ma'roof between them, or ishra bil ma'roof, is to be always caring of each other even after death. And look at the Prophet Sallallahu how he was caring about Khadija, Khadija and honoring and welcome always uh, anyone who related to Khadija or close to Khadija, even her friend when they come to visit him, he will, uh, you know, be so happy to, uh, to have them. And even in one of the narration, he took off his, uh, uh, his clothes, his abay, and he put it on, on the ground for the friend of Khadija to sit on it. So here, when we look at it from that perspective, it becomes an obligation. That's what the meaning, uh, the second opinion. قالوا والعشرة ومن المكافأة بالجميل ولأن علائق الزوجية لم تنقطع because in reality, uh, the partnership didn't, uh, does not end as death because they have the opportunity to continue to be together in paradise. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them for both the paradise. And this is the strongest opinion in the mas'ala. This is the strongest opinion in, in the mas'ala. Uh, therefore, uh, as a conclusion, we have uh, uh, four way of, I mean, uh, levels, if we can say, who are going to be taking care of the cost of the kafan. Uh, of the kafan as an obligation to make the takfin of al-mayyid the dead one. قال, the first thing, the first is to take it from his own estate, from his own legacy, from his own money. The second, قال من تلزمه نفقته. Then if he doesn't have, the one that he's in his life was providing for him. So by obligation, those who, who should provide for him if he was in need to be provided. So this is, will be الأصول والفروع the parents and, and above or the children and uh, below then the third تكون بيت المال the third بيت المال بيت المال which is the uh, let's say uh, the uh, the house of finance if you can say that belongs to the Muslim uh, which is we can say for example uh, the taxes or the zakat or whatever is being paid to the government, uh, you know, who's, you know, uh, leading uh, the Muslim society, they will have a place like called Baytul Mal. Baytul Mal is where to collect, you know, the money uh, to, for a project. The project to make roads, the project to make schools, the project to make hospitals. So this money will belong to the whole Muslim, but no one own it. It belongs to the whole society. Then, if he doesn't have, and those who 
by obligation has to cover for his kafan, they will not be able, then it comes to Baytul Man. Baytul Man will provide for him because this is the money belongs to the whole Muslim and it is saved there for this project to serve for the community. Uh, the third, the third, if there is no Bayt Mal, Umumul Muslimin, all the Muslims, they need to contribute. All of them. They need to contribute to have this kafan paid for and the burial will be fulfilled. Uh, there's Mas'ala when we talked about the man also for the woman, if her husband uh, is poor and she's rich and her husband passed away, it's not an obligation on her to pay for his kafan. Except Ibn Hazm al Bahiri, he said an obligation. But he's recommended because if you look at the life that they live together, and when you say obligation, look at it from not like he should not do it. When we say it's not an obligation, it means if she will not do it, she will not be sinful. That's what it means. If she will not provide for the kafan, doesn't mean that she needs to be blamed. No, the same for her, for him. But as we said, for the man is an obligation as the second opinion that we mentioned. The way of the takfin. ويستحب تكفين رجل في ثلاث لفائف بيض ويستحب تكفين رجل ويستحب تكفين رجل في ثلاث لفائف. Now it is recommended to cover the man in three لفائف. Three لفائف is those كفن شراود sheet big sheet to cover. So take three. Now, the three, as we're going to see, it might include the izar and the qamis. Someone is wearing a shirt. And the izar that will cover the uh, bottom part. And then they cover him with one kafan, with one big shroud to cover the whole one. Or it might be three plus those, because that was the kafan of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa قال والدليل على ذلك هو كفن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the kafan of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه كفن في ثلاث لفائف بيض سحولية the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was covered in three kafan white سحولية so that's why he said they need to be white and the white is recommended is not an obligation because white. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu as being done to him by, you know, those who are among the, uh, they were in his takfin are Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Ali. So those are the khulafa that we take their sunnah at is their way, is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it doesn't have imama, it's like what they put around the head. وقميص. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whatever he was wearing they, they wash him with what he has wearing and then they make three kafan on top of him. لفاف. So that's why here if you look you'll find like the men also have five. He can have five. Five layers. The first layer that covers his body clothes and then Al-Izar, the bottom, two. And then the first, Lafifa, so the cover, the sheet, or the shroud. Then the second one, and the third one. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. قال وكذلك أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن نلبس البياض وأن نكفن فيها موتان. Also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in another hadith, because the companion, they did the kafan of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be white. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, the best of your clothes is the white. And uh, cover or, uh, you know, uh, your dead ones into, with the white, with the white. 
وقال إنها خي خير في خير في بكم. And he said, "Is the best of your clothes the white?" Now, وَإِنْ كُفِّنَ بِغَيْرِ الْأَبْيَوْبِ جَزْ If he will be covered with other than the white, it will be permissible. So it's not an obligation, it's recommended to have the white. وَيُسْتَحَبُّ تَكْفِينُ رَجُلٍ فِي ثَلَاثِ لَفَائِفَ بِيضٍ تُجَمَّرُ بِيضٍ تُجَمَّرُ Three shrouds, three sheets, three clothes. White to Jamaru. At Tajmiru means at Tabkhir. You know the Bakhur, the incense. The incense, you burn the incense, and the smoke that comes from the incense, that's the action called Tajmir. And Tajmir because it comes from the fire and they burn it. So, how they do that? They sprinkle water on the on the lafaf, on the cloth, on the sheet. And then they put incense, they put under it incense, and then subhanAllah, that, that smoke that dry those you know spots of water, uh, it has good smell. So the whole cloth is because you have this smell of the bakhur incense. So that scent comes from the smoke of the bakhur that it will be uh, uh, getting into or on the on the left half. That's what we mean what he meant. Qala to jammaru. To jammaru means to be uh, scented with the smoke of the bakhur, with the smoke of the incense. Thumma tubasatu ba'aduha thawqa ba'ad. Thumma tubasatu ba'aduha thawqa ba'ad. Tubasatu, they lay it flat, the one first sheet, the second one, and the third one. And then they bring the dead body and they pour it flat, I mean laying down. وَيُجْعَلُ الْحَنُوتُ فِي مَا بَيْنَهَا And they put a hanout between every layer. What is a hanout? A hanout is a mix of fragrances. Uh, you know, they put a type of, uh, before they use it, like, you know, kind of powder. And this powder is scent, you know, people, that, that's how they used to, a tib, they call it a tib. So there's special mix that they do, especially for the dead bodies. So it's kind of, uh, you know, thieb, fragrances, you know, what they call uh, good scented, uh, you know, powder, a kind of perfumey. So that's where they pour it. So they pour it between every, every uh, cloth. That's what it means. Tubsatu uh, ba'ad, it means laying flat one on the top of the other, and between every one they put this perfume or this powder that is scented, that fragrances, they put it on them. Then, ثُمَّ يُوضَعُ عَلَيْهَا مُسْتَلْقِيًا And they, they put the body laying down on top of the street. We'll stop here, inshallah, and we'll come back after Salatul Asr. Uh, if you have question, and we'll open for the question before we leave, we have four minutes for the salah. It's part of it. We're going to come to it. So what take the person to be in the grave buried, all of that is from his estate. And that is the priority because this is a necessity for him. That's how to be honored and dignified. If he doesn't have, 
than his close family. If they don't have in the community. Yes, actually is that's why, for example, say people they say we're gonna uh, pay for it. He said no, he has in his will already that he reserved that money for his kafan. So by obligation, they have to take from uh, you know to fulfill his will. Yes. It's allowed, I mean, it's as long as the is paid for and the kafan there and the give the proper burial, that's the most important. But here we're saying, you know, in, in, in a way, uh, there is no money. We have to have the kafan. Look at his uh, will. He didn't put anything. Does he have money? He doesn't have. And everyone said, then he said, his close family, come, you have to do it. Say, we don't have, then we go with it. But if from the beginning, someone say, comes, he say, here, everything is here. So we take and buy it and we'll take care of it. Yeah. Huh? No. It is obligatory when there is no kafan. But if there is kafan? Any other question? That uh, the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala thumma amatahu fa'akbara. From Karamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ala ibadihi, uh, on his servant, that subhanahu wa ta'ala, make this a Sunnah in the humankind to be buried. Then the barrier, as in being an honoring and dignifying the, the one who passed away, it needs to be done in a proper way. To be this person uh, honored and taken care, of, like Subhanallah, see the uh, the hanut, and then the the fragrances is all as part of this respect, because someone can be thrown, put some dirt on it, and. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد قال ثم تبسط بعضها فوق بعض ويجعل الحنوط فيما بينها وَيُجْعَلُ الْحَنُوطُ فِيمَا بَيْنَهَا And we said what the meaning of the hanut. Okay? So it's like powder of type of fragrance that they being put between the, between the shroud or the clothes uh, of al-kafan. ثُمَّ يُوضَعُ عَلَيْهَا مُسْتَلْقِيَا And then he will be put laying down on the, on the, on the kafan. وَيُجْعَلُ مِنْهُ فِي قُطُنٍ بَيْنَ أَلْيَتَيْهِ وَيُشَدُّ فَوْقَهَا خِرْقَةٌ مَشْقُوقَةُ الطَّرْفِ كَالتُبَّانِ كَالتُّ كَالتُبَّانِ Now, subhanAllah, all what we studying this part is not an obligation. You, you remember when we talk always there is uh, in every action there's the minimum requirement for the action to be fulfilled. And there's the preferred way to do it, which is called Suratul Kamar. And then Suratul Ijza. The minimum requirement, which is the obligation, is to cover the body with the full cloth, even when he, his clothes. And this, what we're studying, is the preferred way. The preferred way. As subhanAllah, uh, think always how you want to be treated. You will treat other. And if someone in his death, he wants also to be respected and treated well, that's what we're studying. Qala, now with the perfumes and everything, there is a balance here. The fragrance is to have, you know, scent the whole body and the scent, the shrines, is for honoring the one who died, but also, but also 
to have, you know, avoid in anything like smell comes from the body, to avoid it, also especially to care about those who are going to take care of the dead body, to carry him, to, to cover him, to take him to the grave, all of that. So you take in, you know, the consideration of both parts, the dead body to be honored, scented, etc., with the shrines, and the same thing, those who are going to be carrying and taking care of the body. So by there's a preventive measure here, the preventive measure, you know, the, the, the body, it might have things that he has inside it that might experiment, things like, you know, come out from the body. So either they come out from uh, someone's posture or from the front. So this is, they said here, that's what he's saying, uh, measure that someone will do. They're not obligatory, but this is, you know, the thing that is being done and is recommended done if it's possible to be done. قال يوضع عليها ويجعل منه في قطن بين إليتيه. They take this fragrance, this scented, uh, you know, uh, substance that they have, and they put it in a cotton. You know, they dip a cotton in it, and then they block all the, all the, let's say, uh, the places from where any, uh, anything that come out, from the posture, from the front, and they they put cotton because uh, if the after they cover and they see things that they come when he be moved, things that came out from his body, especially from the back, from the, his seat back, uh, seat part, uh, they will untie everything. You see, you remember we said how things, how to be done. So to put the cotton in that place and to block anything that might come, but the cotton need to be put also, not need to be put, it's recommended to be, have that perfume. So nothing, if even it come out, it will take care of it and will, will uh, avoid any uh, unpleasant scent or, uh, you know, odor will come from if, uh, if anything come out from the body. That's the meaning, قَالَ وَيُجْعَلُ مِنْهُ فِي قُطْنٍ بَيْنَ إِلْيَتَيْهِ وَيُجْعَلُ and he put in a cotton from that fragrance uh, in a cotton to block anything that might come out, out from the body. وَيُشَدُّ فَوْقَهَا خِرْقَةٌ مَشْقُوقَةٌ the meaning of this sentence is that they take kind of a cloth to cover, to hold the, someone's seat, you know, posture, with the front, to hold it all together. So not only the cotton, but to hold it together from the front. is like someone wearing a short. A tuban is kind of a short. Short pe people before they use this type of shorts for those who who are fishermen, you know, when they, you know, so type of shorts. So that's, let's say, you know, between short, uh, short pants or like a kind of a style of, a, let's say, you know, for the baby's diaper, things like that, to be covered with that. That's what he meant by. وَيُشَدُّ فَوْقَهَا خِرْقَةٌ مَشْقُوقَةٌ مَشْقُوقَةُ الطَّرْفِ كَالْتُبَانِ So to secure that part is like someone uh, wearing, uh, let's say, a type of underwear or a diaper or a short. That's how they, that's why مشقوقة, uh, مشقوقة need to have a way to be like uh, cut in the middle so it can be uh, tied, you know, around that part. This is if possible, as you said. Hmm? ويجعل الحنود ثم قال ويشد فوقها خرقة مشقوطة الطرف كالتباني قال تجمع اليتيه ومثانته تجمع اليتيه ومثانته This is in, in brief you know as we said it's like someone he's being covered as putting a diaper uh, the back is alia and the front is the bladder. That's where the you tie it. So that's the meaning of methanatu. Uh, methanatu. Aliyata is his seed. Wa methanatu is the bladder to tie it and to cover. Wa yuj'alu al-baqi ala manafidhi wajhihi wa mawadhi sujood. The rest, the remaining of the fragrance of al-hanood, they pour it on his face. They pour it on his face. Now, al Hanud, this is a mix of, uh, of uh, thieb, but you say someone has perfume, he has those bottle roll, you know, has like uh, the top of it like uh, rolling, 
they can use that or they can use any type of perfume. So they call وَيَجْعَلُ الْبَاقِ عَلَى مَنَافِذِ وَجْهِهِ مَنَافِذِ وَجْهِهِ The front of his face which is will be here talking about uh, the, for, uh, the for, forehead, uh, the nose, even the scar, they say some of the scars say the old uh, on his lips, uh, on his hand, uh, you know, uh, that's the face. And then على مواضع سجود على مواضع سجود So on the face, on the nose, you know, on the side of the eyes, on the lips, and on the, uh, on the ears. And then مواضع سجود مواضع سجود to put fragrance or hanout on the places of the sujood. The places of the sujood are seven. Uh, the forehead and the nose and the hand and the toes and the rukbatan and the knees. And this is, subhanAllah, uh, is to honor and dignify these places that he used to make sujood on it, to be perfumed. وَإِنْ طُيِّبَ كُلُّهُ فَحَسَنْ If you put perfume on all his body, also that's good. So this is the etiquette to start with the face, the places of sujood. If you have more to put on the whole body, that's قَالَ فَحَسَنُ That also is good. And then حَسَنْ It means that wasn't done at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But after some of the companions, they did it. So, and something is permissible and is good. Hassan. Qala, thumma yuraddu tarfu al-lifafati al-ulya ala shakkihi al-ayman. Wa yuraddu tarafuha al-akharu fawqa. Wa yuraddu tarafuha al-akharu fawqa. And in uh, the book you have min fawqa. So the idea when when he's putting laying down on the kafan, the three layers of the uh, sheet, you don't cover him. You take the right part for his side and pour it on the top, and then take the other one and you fold it on the other side. The idea here is not to take the three together to do it. To take the first layer, which is, uh, you know, covering the first that he's laying on it, to take the right of it, and then to fold the other part here covered. Then the second one, and then to fold the left side. And then the third one, the right and thing. So the, the covering of the, uh, here with the, with the kefan will be, one, two for the first, one, two for the second, one, two for the third. Not all together, one and two. That's what he said here, that's the meaning. قَالَ ثُمَّ يَصَدُّ طَرَفُ الْلِفَافَ One, because we have ثَلَاثَ لَفَافَ One لَفَ We lift it, we fold it from the right side and fold it back to cover. And then the second, then the third. ثم الثانية والثالثة كذلك. Start with the first, then the second, and the third. ويجعل أكثر الفاضل عند رأسه. So if the kafan, the, the sheet is very long, longer than the body, the part to fold, you know, the remaining part put to be covered the head on the top. And from the other side, so to pour it, the more part will be for the head, and then this other part will be toward the feet. That's why قَالَ وَيُجْعَلُ أَكْثَرُ الْفَاضِلِ عَلَىٰ رَأْسِهِ The remaining, the bigger part will be put for the head, so the head will be more secured in the cover. And when you have more kafan, uh, you know, part of the sheet from the side of the head and from the side of the feet, so it will be stronger or like more secure for the kafan to, to remain on its place. قَالَ ثُمَّ يَعْقِدُهَا Then he tie it. Tying from the side of the head, roll it, tie it, and the tying there is no number. The tying what is required tying to 
to hold firm the kafan uh, around the body. So to make like two ties, three, or what is required. But there is no such a, a number, exact number. And also can be tied in the, uh, uh, in the middle. And the hikmah, the wisdom, is not to, to untie it, to not to, to be uncovered. So when you tie it, everything in its place and secured. And these ties need to be untied when he put in the grave. So the tying here was served for the transportation. When he get to the grave, the end time. Because, uh, subhanAllah, the body will take a volume and swallow in the grave. So they untie it to have things, you know, uh, be normal. That's Allah al-Afiyah. There's uh, Athar being mentioned by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. قَالَ إِذَا أَدْخَلْتُمُ الْمَيِّتَ الْقَبْرَ فَحُلُّ الْعُقَدِ When you get the dead person to the grave, and tie the, those uh, knots that you have done. وَتُحَلُّ فِي الْقَبْرِ وَأُنْ كُفِّنَ فِي قَمِيصٍ وَمِئْزَرٍ وَلِفَافَةٍ جَازٍ وَإِنْ كُفِّنَ فِي قَمِيسٍ وَمِئْزَرٍ وَلِفَافَةٍ جَاسٍ So this is the preferred way how to do it. Now he's telling you what is the minimum. So if someone, for example, have wearing, you know, uh, an upper shirt and then covered with izar, uh, that will be enough. And then you bring like one uh, sheet and you cover him, that will be enough. That's what you say. وَإِنْ كُفِّنَ If you make the kafan in a qamis, mi'zar, uh, the tie the bottom, walifafa, yes, and you cover him, will be enough. قال بين القدر المجزء من ذلك فقال وإن كفنا في قميص ومئزر ولفافة جاز will be enough. Uh, be enough. Uh, in uh, also uh, in another شرح في الروض المربع he said قال uh, وكره تخريق اللفائف. تخريق um, اللفائف is to rip the kafan. So when they come, they, for example, they come and make a big rip on the top. And then the second one, they also, they rip it. Uh, this is not sunnah, or it's not required, but actually, actually dislike it to do it. When you say he's dislike it, therefore they used to do that. The question, why they used to do that? So he said, قَالَ كَرِهَا وَكُرِهَا تَخْرِيقُ الْلَفَاءِ SubhanAllah, uh, and this is someone who will not uh, think that there's people that do such a thing. People before, or like, you know, in certain uh, society, certain generation, they used to steal al kafan. So SubhanAllah, they, uh, and dig back the, the grave, Take the kafan and put the dead person back. So for, for society or place, no one by such, you know, crime, they said, rip it so they will not have interest in taking it to protect the dead person and to, you know, leave him alone. So that's because an action being done for as to take, you know, to, to face this type of violation or type of crime, they said they do such a thing. But we say it is makruh because your concern is to take care of the, uh, of the dead person and to cover him. وَتُحَلُّ فِي الْقَبْرِ وَإِنْ كُفِّنَ فِي قَمِيسٍ وَمِئْزَرٍ وَلِفَافَةٍ جَهْزٍ This is what we say. وتكفن المرأة في خمسة أثواب وتكفن المرأة في خمسة أثواب The woman, she will be, you know, covered in five, five أثواب, five clothes. The five clothes uh, is actually like the man, is like the man. For example, if you look at the kafan of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was has his qamis, izar, and then three lafaf. 
For the woman, then she will have the hijab, the izar, the bottom part, and the shirt, and then two clothes. So this is five. So al khimar, what cover the head? Al qamis, al dira, do akmam, so that cover the body. The, uh, and al izar, what cover the uh, bottom part? وَلِفَافَةً to be clothed to cover her whole body. And this is, uh, is inspired from a hadith that is marfu'ah. But there is a question mark on the soundness of the hadith. And if this hadith is not sahih, therefore there is no difference between the man and the woman in the takfir. Because we only do extra or different if we have justification from the sunnah. If not, it's always the men and the women are alike in all the ahkam, uh, except where it's been specified in the sharia. And as we said, the man also, he has five. Because the shirt and the izar, uh, if we, they keep for him the shirt and the izar, and we add three lafaif, this is five. But uh, here has been said, the author is mentioned, the five athweb, five athweb, five clothes, because of the hadith we mentioned. And if this hadith this has, you know, kalam uh, fihi nadar, question mark, then uh, here is two, uh, as we said, it will be the same as the man. It will be the same as the man. And here, he, in his conclusion of this chapter, uh, he's telling us three lafaif or five for the woman, or the same, the, the required, the minimum required, the obligation, قَالَ وَالْوَاجِبُ ثَوْبٌ يَسْتُرُ جَمِيعًا وَالْوَاجِبُ ثَوْبٌ يَسْتُرُ جَمِيعًا And the obligation is a cloth, a cloth, uh, uh, you know, a sheet or a shroud that cover the whole body. And the hadith of Mus'ab ibn Umayr, when he died, he has lifafa, they were covered, when they cover his head, uh, subhanAllah, his, his toes are uncovered, his feet. When they cover his feet, to show how the companion at the time, they were in a very tough situation, and, uh, and, and they had, subhanAllah, I mean, Mus'ab ibn Umayr, the rich, spoiled kid, turned to die, you know, doesn't have even to provide for his kafan. And the ummah, they were poor at the time. So when they cover his head, his feet are uncovered. And when they covered his uh, feet, they uncovered it. So the Prophet ﷺ said to cover his head, and they put some leaves on his, on his feet to be covered. So from this hadith, we know that the obligation is to cover the whole body. The preferred way is what we have described. قَالَ وَالْوَاجِبُ ثَوْبٌ يَسْتُرُ جَمِيعًا وَالْوَاجِبُ ثوب يستر جميعا قال أمر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أن يجعل الكفن من عند الرأس ويجعل على الرجلين شيء من الإذخر and this is concerning Musab ibn Umayr رضي الله تعالى عنه in hadith to cover his head and to cover his feet because they didn't have enough cloth to cover his feet with الإذخر kind of nabat ma'roof is idkhar something that leaves or you know uh, plants that is known uh, on in uh, in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now based on that qala fa idha lam yujad shay if they they don't find anything is like the person you know was burned with his own clothes and they don't find any clothes uh, or any shroud or anything to cover him. Then he will be covered with, with uh, uh, any type of plant, leaves, grass. And then they wrap around that to hold it. And if they don't find anything, then uh, it will be, uh, you know, he will be buried as is. لعموم قول الله تعالى فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم في الله at the best of your ability if they don't find anything then he will be buried as is 
ان شاء الله ويل ستاب هير اف يو هاف اني كويشن نيكست تايم باذن الله وي فينيش ذا بوك اوف الجنائز اند وي ستارت ويز ذا ويتش ويل بارت صلاه الجنازه هاو تو دو ذا صلاه اوف الجنازه صلاه الميت اون ذا ديد بيرسون ان شاء الله And after that, we starting the book of zakat, the book of zakat. Insha Allah. Any question? Take a few minutes, and we'll start the next class. Insha Allah. Our next class is Maqasid al Sharia. It is in the contract that they. Uh, it is in the. I mean, in. If it is part of the of the of the contract, uh -huh. yes, they should, because he being the person was paying for that, right? He was paying for premium, for uh, for to be uh, covered after his death. Right? Yeah. Is that uh, the insurance it has, you know, it was haram and uh, now it's permissible. <laughs> the fatwa before it was haram. But uh, the majority of the scholar now, the contemporary scholar, they say it's permissible. Because of uh, many of the, uh, uh, it was haram for two reasons. The first reason, some of the scholars they say, is kind of conflict with the trust in Allah, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like someone want to secure something, any type of insurance. He want to secure, let's say, uh, to cover himself or herself from something in the future which is the destiny in the hand of Allah. But this one, uh, actually, the answer for it, uh, Sharia doesn't uh, uh, forbid you from planning and projecting and cover yourself. And this is, doesn't conflict with your belief in the destiny. Uh, for example, someone, it's very cold outside. I said, you don't have to wear any coat, you know, to protect yourself from not falling sick. Because if you're going to fall sick, that will be your destiny. I said, no, you wear coat. And then, you know, to protect yourself, But does it mean if you protect yourself, you're not going to fall sick? Right? So that you take your precaution, and then the destiny, whatever happened, that we believe in it and we submit to it. So this first thing doesn't conflict. The second argument that they had, they said, you are paying for something that you don't get uh, anything in exchange, like the bayah. Uh, because the form of selling of transaction here is not clear before it wasn't clear they said for example if you pay for a book you get the book here you're paying but what are you getting so the contract itself has a question mark then uh, the scholar now they after the experience and people they had like went through real uh, issues and things happen And it's been proven that the, this company, they've been paying. So it becomes like a service paid, guaranteed the payment when, when, when what you have paid for happened. So it would make the contract to be like a kind of permissible contract and regard it to be fair contract. And that's why uh, that's, you know, from the perspective of the transaction. Then uh, the condition of the society. Before and uh, in Muslim society, there's this strong cohesion and strength. So someone who, who happened to him or like he died, the whole family will support. The whole tribe, the whole uh, town. Now living in societies, where might be someone in the neighborhood, uh, he's the only one who's Muslim. 
uh, if one of the member of the family passed away to call all member and uh, things. So it becomes like from th the structure of the society today, those, uh, you know, uh, this insurance will be really needed in, in state, in a situation of, of difficulties for the family after uh, the main person in the family will pass away. Uh, why? Because the condition of the society is not like the condition of the society they have it before or uh, some of us they have it in their, uh, in their back homes. Uh, regarding all this element, it becomes, you know, so many of the scholars they say is permissible. Therefore, if someone uh, and um, also some of the insurance, someone doesn't have the choice. He has to do it. And some of the, uh, you know, or many of the uh, employees, they offer it. So someone cannot decline it when he doesn't have justification or strong proof to tell him haram to, to no use it. Therefore, it's part of his salary. Because it's part of his salary, he's paying for it. Uh, like, you know, the 401k is a part of his salary because people, they say, you know, this is granted or in a way said, if he doesn't work, he will not, he doesn't get it, right? It's because of his work that he's getting. It's because of his work, uh, you know, his service and his work that he's getting all this uh, benefit. So this benefit, part of the package of his own salary. So he's his own money. Therefore, it's part of his estate and then it will be taken to part of it to pay for his burial, for his kafan, etc. etc. Wallahu ta'ala. Any other question? This is one of the nawazil we see many ahkam to see how relevant and universal the Islamic Sharia. It was, you know, many of the hakam change of the time. So before it was, uh, you know, forbidden for its circumstances, for the reality, for the existence of the Badil, there's something who helped the society. There's the cohesion of the family, there's the strength, there's the whole town together. So if we don't have any more that, so there's another solution that can be, so the Sharia, look at the Maslaha, that's actually the, the study of the Maqasa, the Sharia. So the intent here is how can you support, can help, help how can you find a solution from a fa for a family living in a society where there's no this uh, cohesion that we're talking about, that we uh, exist in the Muslim society. Thank <laughs> you.